The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips, and cover clients' cases. My name is Paulina. I'm the community manager at iSpring, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. As a speaker, I have invited an e-learning specialist, Alina Matveva. Hi, Alina. How are you doing today? Hi, Paulina. Hello, everybody. I'm fine. Awesome. So this is um, the first time Alina is giving a talk in English, so she will very much appreciate your support, guys. And today, I think she will be covering a very interesting topic. She will be talking about and actually sharing the practical tips with you guys on how to create your first microlearning course. So stay tuned, and as always, you're more than welcome to ask your questions. And in order to do that, please submit them in the question box. And you should find it on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel, somewhere at the bottom. And on the screen right now, you should see how it looks. Okay, so I think at this point we are ready to begin. So Alina, let me please pass the mic over to you as well as the presenter rights. Okay. Okay, I can see your screen. Oh, great. Um, just one second. Do you still see my face? Yes. <laughs> ah. Now, no, now we now? do it. Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Alina, and right now I'm talking to you from the beautiful city of St. Petersburg. In Russia, of course, uh, not in America. Before we start, I want to introduce myself. Uh, well, I have um, over five years of experience in development and implementation of learning management systems, launching e learning in companies from scratch, and creating and implementing uh, key business processes of e learning using agile methodology. Uh, today, uh, we will be talking about what exactly is microlearning and how it works, how to create your first microlearning course, and a few cheat sheets to help you get started in a snap. Well, so after this webinar, you should be able to create your first microlearning course. And before we start, I want to ask you, what do you know about microlearning? Please share your comments in the chat. I will allow you a couple of moments to do that. Uh, and uh, is microlearning only about online education or maybe about online course development? Or maybe you just heard this word somewhere but don't know what it is? Well, I give you one minute. Yeah, guys, please don't be shy. Share what you know about microlearning, what you think it is. Maybe you don't know yet, and this is the right place for you to get started. So Tony says, short and sweet modules that cover a single topic. Awesome. Um, Brett says that he doesn't know yet. Becky, I think microlearning is by size, accessible learning. Seth, short, uh, directed training for students or staff. Um, y says, I don't know what it is. Lika says, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's the first time to hear about it. Awesome. Thank you guys very much for being so active. Oh, yes. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And what is microlearning? Um, microlearning is a type of training delivered to a learner in small units or chunk every so often. It consists of microlearning courses or lessons. It doesn't matter what we call them. Each lesson or microlearning course equals one skill. 
That's why microlearning is also called bite-sized learning. Here it is. Uh, so, and just one second. <laughs> um, what is microlearning course? Uh, we develop every microlearning course. Just one second. <laughs> I forget about main part, how it works. Um, it's so easy because first of all, uh, we develop a bunch of microlearning courses, 10, 20, 30, 50, um, etc. Then we publish the courses to a learning management system. And the last step is assigning microlearning courses, one, two, or maximum three courses every third, fifth, or seventh day to learner. Well, it's easy. And what is microlearning courses? So you can see here three types of courses. Um, we develop every microlearning course in iSpring Suite, here at iSpring, of course. And this course is a component of a training module or a whole learning system or training module. Uh, let's talk about this component. Microlearning courses can be of different types, forms, and durations. There are three general types of microlearning courses in corporate trading. Uh, courses about products, uh, for example, products created by your company. Uh, the second type is training skills and uh, skills training and talent development. And uh, software courses. Each type of course has different content and structure. The structure of microlearning has a specific order of training materials, which depends on the industry. Retail, healthcare, pharmaceutical, beauty industry, IT, and so on. Before we continue, uh, please answer the question, in which industry do you work? Again, please share your comments. Um, I'll give you again one minute. Paulina? Maybe even less. So we have um, education, higher education, education. I'm in the fishing industry. Wow. Education, finance, mm -hmm. education. I am an IT trainer, higher education, legal sector, learning and development company. I work in education, specializing in English as a second language. Yeah, so um, I think, Alina, that's... My, micro-learning will definitely work in those industries, right? Yes. Thanks a lot for your questions. Um, let's get back to the structure of courses. Well, structure of courses. Uh, there are four structures, and the first type of structure is PowerPoint slides plus quiz. This structure is used for product and simple software courses without practicing a skill. You can use it in any industry. Uh, the second one is PowerPoint slides plus dialogue simulation. This structure includes skills courses where learners first read or watch a video or listen something, then practice in dialogue simulation. This structure is the best way to teach salespeople in retail companies, um, but in your case, I think it's the best way to for skills training. Uh, the third type is just dialogue simulation. This type is perfect for practicing communication skills without any pre preparation. Also, it can be used in retail. It's the best way to teach employees at call centers uh, because you can just create a script for the learners. And fourth type, uh, the last type is PowerPoint slides plus dialogue simulation plus quiz. The structure can vary, so you can use um, this order, PowerPoint slides plus quiz plus dialogue si simulation and, it's, and so on. You can use this structure for any type of courses, like product, skills uh, or software courses. 
uh, now we know about the structure. Let's talk about the, um, the course duration. Well, and again, I have a question. Uh, how long should a course be? Two or five minutes or maybe 30 minutes? Or maybe we should measure it by number of slides. And how many slides should we use in micro course? 10, 30, or maybe 100 slides? Well, again, um, please answer the question. Mm -hmm. So, Olive says two to five minutes. Y says five minutes. Um, Fred, Freddie, by minimum five. Uh, Zoe mm -hmm. thinks it should be within six minutes. Um, Jack thinks it should be set by minutes. 10, 15 mm -hmm. minutes, maximum 10 slides, less than five minutes, a two to five minutes. Okay, <laughs> so Alina, tell us, how should we set the duration? Okay, the best answer is waiting for bus time. Great answer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I have just one solution for you. Well, uh, there are my own three rules. Um, well, and solution <laughs> from me. Of course. <laughs> Remember, you set the rules. Uh, and uh, my rules, I follow these rules before I start developing my new course. Uh, first, I explore the audience. Um, you should know your learners and understand the type of content you, your learners prefer. Then I study the materials that I'm going to teach. It can be simple instruction on one side and complicated materials, books, articles, software description on the other side. And after that, I test the first module, two or five courses in a pilot group. So it doesn't matter uh, what time it would be, five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, it have to be suited for your audience. And now I think we are ready for preparation before creating a microlearning course. Um, before we start creating something new, we need to explore several things. This algorithm helps you to understand the whole process of course creation. And here are, uh, on this slide, you can see five steps of preparation. First of all, uh, identify the needs of your audience. Uh, second step is choose the topic of your course. Remember, it has to be relevant to your learners. Third step, uh, set the goals of your microlearning course and answer the following questions in the title and description. Three main questions. First question, why do they need to learn it? Uh, they, I mean audience, your audience. Uh, the second question, how does it help them in their work? And third question, how can it improve their skills? So, uh, here are three main questions, remember it. Uh, first step is exploring the topic. First of all, find subject matter experts. Um, it can be um, internal or external, who know how to. Uh, then find educational materials, instructions, video, audio, presentations, and other useful documents. Uh, after that, find other resources. Don't forget about websites, useful links, references to a book, or maybe a link for um, Facebook group or group in LinkedIn. And uh, the last one step is select the most useful materials for your particular audience. Well, now we are ready to create our microlearning course. Um, I will show you my own microlearning course. With the release of iSpring Suite 9, a lot of new features were added. So I have to educate our tech support, sales managers, and marketing. I will cover the interaction feature 
from the last release. But first of all, I will show you my own innovation. I call it course card. Uh, so just one second. Here and, it is. Yes, and course I would card. like to mention here that we will be given away Alina's innovation. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. if you guys look on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel, you should uh, see the handouts section. I hope you can see it. And in this handout section, you will see two documents, the course card that Alina will cover right now, and also how to prepare for the course creation. So um, Alina was so generous and you guys, you guys are welcome to use it in your own work. Thank you very much, Alina, for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, well, this card, course card, I use it uh, to organize the information about the course, not only content, but all the information. And it helps me to stay focused on the topic structure and the audience of my course. And you can see here course title uh, when I write um, course title, it has to be clear, and I use uh, 80 symbols or less. Description, um, I write description, and when I write it, I answer uh, the questions. So here, these questions. Knowledge. It is about knowledge, what every employee with um, the advanced skills level should know about the product in our case of course in our company uh, so um, in our company it's 12 inventions in ice cream what about skills so skills that learners will use in everyday practice so after that course our learners um, will know how it works and how it helps our clients to complete their tasks. Tools used. So here I write um, iSpring Suite 9 because I use it. Uh, but here you can rec recite tools that you used. Type of course. Uh, I write here um, Software plus product course because uh, our product is software, Ice Cream Suite. Uh, then structure of the course. Um, there is a simple structure, PowerPoint slides plus quiz. And um, attend course update. Um, it's how many times we'll be updating this course. This depends on the topic, product, or company policy. In our case, um, it's every ice cream update. Number of learners, uh, in our case, it's 50 employees. Uh, and um, how many learners will take this course? Course duration, approximately 15 minutes. And as you can see, um, I measure this course in minutes, uh, so duration in minutes. Subject matter experts, in our case, it's product development team. And um, here you can write a department or a name of the experts. Um, your audience, in our case, so here, here are um, department. Uh, different departments and here are the learners of the course. Uh, grade of our learners is advanced. Uh, so this course um, is for employees with one plus year of experience in company. And training manager, me, person in charge. And uh, due date, date of the course launch is tomorrow date, 15 of June. Uh, now, it's not only course card, it's also course structure, but this structure is about content. So, uh, this structure consists of four parts. First part is a title, the second part is description, 
uh, third part is body of course. So body of this course equals one interaction. Um, this interaction is media catalog. Um, depending on the case, this part can be bigger than mine. Uh, so you can use in this part not only this interaction, you can use also different slides, a uh, few interactions um, and something else. And the last part is quiz. In our case, it's four random questions, two random questions out of four total. So I'm ready to show you our microlearning course. Um, here it is. So oh, it is first slide. It's the title of our course. Interactions. The second slide is um, description of course. It is also description of course. And here we write to um, our learners that Ice Cream Sweet Nine. An interaction in Ice Prince with Nine is no harder than heating up a slice of pizza, and it's true. And it is a description also. So here is a body, of course, uh, and it is an interaction uh, that consists of 12 parts, 12 interaction. Mm, so it is a first interaction names tabs uh, I use the in, in this part picture also text plus picture glossary oh I'm sorry next one timeline I can give you more time if you want to read more about interactions. Alina, will you be able to share the link to this course afterwards so that they can take this course at their own pace? Okay, I think yes, of course. Okay, awesome. So mm -hmm. I think you just can keep going. Okay, okay. So here um, we can add not only pictures, but also screencasts. This screencast I created in Ice Springs with Nine. Well, select process. Also, it is a screencast. I want to show you my beloved interaction. Here it is, guided image. I'm so sorry, but it's, I love it. That's okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next step. And the last interaction is Media Catalog. Uh, I use Media Catalog for this course. And the last part is quiz. So let's start quiz. First question is check all new interactions in Ice Prince with Nine. So let's check. Steps media. Mm -hmm. Guided. Yes. Oh, correct. Hmm. I'm very good learner. A uh, circle diagram labeled graphics. Submit. Oh, great. So um, we can review quiz. or close and close our course. So, 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 just a second, please. So I spent four hours creating this microlearning course. Uh, one hour I spent preparing for course and three hours I spent creating this course. A lot of people think that to make micro-learning course is easier than big e-learning course. 
But sometimes you need to spend even more time on the developing of microlearning. In order your students can spend less time on taking it. Well, that's it. And now I'm ready for your questions. Paulina? Yes. Um, uh, if you guys have uh, lots of questions, for example, you're welcome to uh, send them to Alina directly using this email address and also connect with Alina on Facebook. <laughs> so she's very active mm -hmm. there too. So you're welcome to chat with her. And yes, right now we are ready for any questions that you have for Alina about microlearning and anything else, e-learning. And at this point, I would like to make two um, important announcements. First is um, this webinar is being recorded. So if you guys need to run to another meeting, for example, or just need to leave, uh, I will send you the recording sometime really soon, as soon as it's uploaded to YouTube. And also, I would like to mention one more time that the handouts for you are ready. You're welcome to download them from the handouts section, and it should be on the right side of the GoToWebinar panel, somewhere at the bottom near the chat, near the question box. There should be a, a handout, and if you click on it, you will see two documents right there. And also, there is a, what there was a question, Alina. Um, if you would be willing to also share the presentation that you used during your talk. Um. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wonderful. All right, so now let's move on to the question. Um, there is one from, just one moment, from Zoe. Um, is microlearning similar to Spock, I guess, small private or open course, which uh, as far as I know is also an alternative to MOOC courses, massive online oh. open courses. Is that is microlearning similar to this one? It can be similar because MOOC is um, so microlearning. Uh, we can use microlearning not only in e-learning but also in uh, blended learning, mm -hmm. and of course we can use it in massive online open courses. Mm -hmm. So I think that the answer is yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I think yes. Okay, wonderful. And yes, um, just one moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is a question from, I, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Atef. Slides are made by Storyline Program or PowerPoint? And I guess you PowerPoint. Are... <laughs> yes, and if you're asking of about PowerPoint. yes, the micro learning course, um, Alina, you created it with iSpring, correct? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's also a question from Seth. You mentioned making a catalog of micro learning courses. Generally mm -hmm. speaking, how many would you make for a short course? Uh, how many interactions or how many media catalog? Seth, could you please provide understand. us the details? And there is a question from Sa Sa Sagif. Sajif, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where can I find some best practices formats to micro learning? So I have um, a table with the best practices of micro learning mm -hmm. and I can send you on Facebook I think and not today I think it would be maybe 18 or 19 of June 
Okay. Is it okay? Um, so, mm -hmm. Sanjeev, could you please um, send a message to Alina on Facebook so that she can get back to you with more information? Okay, and there's a question from Brett. If I already mm -hmm. have if I already have the PowerPoint slide, can I add a quiz to it? Of course, of course you can. You just add another slide another one slide mm -hmm. after your presentation and uh, add a quiz. It's easy. <laughs> And you can write uh, an email on tech support to Vice Prim. Mm -hmm. um, I think they they know how can you do it. They will be happy to help. Let me, by the way, share the email address. So it will be support at iSpringSolutions.com. So you guys are more than welcome to su submit your questions there. And uh, there is a question from Jack. What would be a go-to approach to introducing the course to a learner? Are the first few sections of the course card that you shared, Alina, useful for this purpose? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't understand this question. So we're introducing the course to a learner. Like you had the introduction slide, description slide. So... Mm -hmm. Yes. Is your course card useful for that? Yes, of course. I, I, as far as I understood, this is how you do it. This is how you always create your content, micro learning content, using this course yes. card. Mm -hmm. So it's only my way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I share it with you just my own um, experience and that's it. Strategy of of mm -hmm. some kind. Mm -hmm. And then Seth sent us some more details regarding his previous question about catalog. <clears throat> so uh, he says, how many micro learning courses would you put together for a course? For example, to train people on all of the iSpring updates, how many micro learning courses did you make? Hmm, it's very interesting question. Thank you. Um, in my practice, I one course, so not in one course, in one program. Mm -hmm. uh, for one program, I create um, more than thirty courses. Uh, there are um, there was courses about product. And it was in retail company. So, but here in iSpring, um, we created uh, 10 micro learning courses. Mm, and our program consists of 10 courses or maximum 15 courses, like this course that you uh, saw. Mm -hmm. Okay, and moving on to the next question um, from Tony. Would you expect to speed up course design with experience or will it always need quite a lengthy time input? So basically, if, for example, now you spend four hours on course creation, will you be able to spend less and less time? Um, no. Now no. <laughs> but first, when I begin, when I began, uh, I spent about eight or ten hours. Mm -hmm. So you did and cut it. Uh, yes. I'm sorry. Um, yes, it was. It, it wasn't so easy the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes, Tony, there is always a hope. <laughs> you will do it twice. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, faster, two times faster with more experience. Um, okay, so the next question, um, would you link from Manif 
and again, I'm, I'm terribly sorry if I mispronounce your name, guys. Uh, would you link micro learning courses using learning pathways or would you add them into a specific catalog? So is, do you, is this clear question to you? Not so clear. So uh, I assume that uh, if you are done with one course, for example, mm -hmm. will you would it link to the next one? Or would you have like a catalog with all the courses inside of it? Still don't understand. I'm so sorry. Mm, well, if I understand in, in a right way, how, uh, you mean? I, I probably <laughs> would ask, how would you organize those micro learning mm -hmm. courses for your learners? How should they take those micro learning courses? Yes, a, I, mm -hmm. I create one program that consists of a different micro learning courses. Uh, so first of all, I create two or five micro learning courses, uh, publish them in learning management system uh, in uh, this program and then add every three or five days new e-learning course. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I hope that answers your question, Manif. Um, and then Jack, a question from Jack, is microlearning, oh, I'm sorry, if microlearning is a bite-sized chunk, how should all the chunks be organized together within the larger course? Is there a best practice model for this? And I think you just answered that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I um, answered this question mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And I hope Jack, Alina did cover it. Um, is there... <laughs> yeah, I think it's a question. Tony asks, is there an online company you would recommend for selling iSpring courses online? I actually don't quite understand this question, Tony. Mm -hmm, me too. Could, could you please provide more details? And again, guys, I'm happy to mention that the recording of this webinar will be sent to you and... Um, all the resources I will also share with you in the message. So don't worry, you will receive all of them. <laughs> okay, and there's a question from Seth. Have you used any recorded videos, audio in your micro learning courses? Of course, of course, yes. <laughs> um, but it doesn't need to um, everyone. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, for our learners, uh, we use um, sometimes only PowerPoint slides without audio and without video. But in some cases, we use video uh, and we use um, PowerPoint slides plus audio uh, because um, somebody, <laughs> some employees, uh, <laughs> can can't listen the audio uh, in their workspace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for my English is it's very poor, and I'm really sorry. So in this case, you would do what if they if they can't listen to the audio? Uh, yes, in this case, I use only PowerPoint slides without audio and without video, just um, pictures and text. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you also, uh, whenever you create, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong, but whenever you create um, mm -hmm. courses for your audience, you also 
try to figure out what environment they will have in order to take the training. Yes, of course. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a great point. Okay, all right, any other question, guys? <laughs> Tony says that, Alina, your English is perfectly understandable, so. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there is also a question from Tony. Uh, so he says, once your LMS courses are complete, is there a way of marketing them online? How would you recommend I attract newcomers? So you mean new students? Um, well, yes. I, mm -hmm. I don't understand at all. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Tony, but I don't think that this is the best uh, resource to ask from Maybe if I find, I should find, look for another expert <laughs> who will be focusing on selling content on online and marketing it the best way. Actually, it's really interesting. It's a great topic. Thank you for mentioning it. Okay, so yes, I think at this point we are ready to wrap up. Thank you very much, guys, for attending our today's session. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. and thank you very much, Alina, for covering this wonderful topic, the microlearning and how to, I, I hope you guys will be able to create your first microlearning course if you haven't done so. Well, thank you guys and thank you, Paulina. Um, I hope I hear or see you in a webinar again. Of course. Um, yeah well thank you have a good day <laughs> yeah jack says wish us luck good luck jack if you have any questions you know to whom you should address them alina is always happy to help all right so okay guys i hope you have a wonderful day and thanks again for joining and we'll keep in touch so we'll see you at our next webinar bye bye everyone bye